Hello folks, it's Rich here, the novice noise making, novice noise maker, ruh, ruh, ruh. I'm a novice guitarist, can't really play it, but I like them. I've had 192 guitars now. <laughs> um, yeah, if you're interested in reviews and opinions of affordable guitars in the main, a few bit more expensive ones, there's a playlist, loads of stuff on, go check it out. In the meantime, here we've got a vintage brand guitar, with Jerry Donahue and Kelly. It's got two pickups on it, a Tele bridge pickup and a Strat neck pickup. It's got a five way switch. Yes, there's a really good review on, of this done by a guy who can play guitar, <laughs> who goes through all the pickups, selectors, and he tries to talk a little bit about how they all make those different sounds, magic wiring. But you've got basically, from what I can gather, two proper Strat tones, the neck obviously, and position four. Then you've got a bit of a humbucker-esque sound, a bit like maybe a four-way switch. Where's uh, out phase? No. Uh, parallel? <laughs> parallel universe? I don't know. Something. Something. And to make it chunkier. And then, yeah, who knows how the other ones work. Of course, I'm struggling with this giant box. It's taken ages to get here, by the way. The power seller on eBay. Um, I just want a quick shout out to Jack Taylor Guitars. Hi Jack if you're watching. Sorry, it's probably not, but if he is. He's got a great channel, he can play guitar. He's actually got some music out, it's like proper people playing music and stuff. There's some really good demos and reviews. Uh, I don't know how many subscribers he's got now, five or six thousand. But he's, he's proper. So when he uh, commented the other day, I don't like this box, on one of my videos, I was flattered. Thank you Jack. So, yeah, Jack Taylor Guitars, go check him out, Northern Night, Protect the Humour, like him. Also, need to have a, another little thanks to Metal Alex, Metal Alex, for very kindly, you should go and check Met Metal Alex out, if you're into gaming, he's into gaming, he can play guitar, he can sing as well, he's a proper person. He, uh, he very kindly did a short reaction video, as well, a help out video to my changing from A minor to F. So thank you for that, Metal Alex. And then it's Cracker Jack. Yo, Cracker Jack. <laughs> he did a, a quick short. A lot of stuff going on in this box. A quick short um, reaction to my going to the gym video. <laughs> Thanks ever so much for all the people who have commented on that. Glad I'm not the only one. Glad I'm not just a grumpy old bugger. <laughs> Sweaty horrible people irritating me. The gym. <laughs> I'm a proper old school gym rat. I was a gym instructor in the 90s and a PT. That was my thing. I lived and breathed it. Ah, do you know what? I mean, I'm glad that this guy has put stuff in this box, but it's not a proper box, is it? It's just a cardboard box with loads of junk in it. I hate that. Anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. Now, one of my reservations about vintage branded guitars, unless you buy them from Richard's Guitars in Stratford on Avon, where he spends two weeks, you can't just go in there and buy a guitar from the shop. It's just really expensive ones as well. He will set, he will strip the guitar down and set it up and make it work. Other than that, vintage guitars QC is turd. <laughs> I've, I've recently had a little finger off one who were in guitar guitar on the shelf. It was a jazz master, it looked nice. <laughs> Cut my fingers off almost. And all the ones I've had, I just had varying degrees of rubbishness, which is a shame for what is prime. Tusk, XL nut, which is a shame for what is principally good stuff, you know, good hardware and Trev Wilkinson and all that. It's got a good reputation, hasn't it? But yeah, the QC I found on them, really poor. But this one, was pretty much half the recommended retail price. There are a few power sellers on eBay and a few just sellers online who must just get loads of these from I don't know where because you often see them for a lot less than that RRP. So this one was 250, I think the RRP is 479, something like that. But it's the same with the V100s, which is their Les Paul. I've had several of those, you know, once they get going, they're, they're fine. And yeah. So you can get them cheaper to have a little proper look around. I'm already seeing QC. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Anyway. Anyway, let's have a proper look. That's a weird colour. Yeah. Right, let's just have a quick peek at this sort of blonde colour. Now the lighting is not very good. Look, put another lamp on. Does that help? Might do. Alright, just whilst 
you're having a quick peek of that, I'm going to have a closer first impressions at knob fills. Okay, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. It's a weird finish, it's a matte kind of a finish. Is that mark there? It is. Um, looks like it's had a stick or something on it. It's a weird matte finish. It's, um, hmm, I can't describe that. You can see through it slightly. It looks like it's been hand painted. <laughs> uh, let's try the frets on here. Oh. To my astonishment and pleasure, they're all right. Uh, not clean though, not the dirtiest I've seen, so that's a surprise. That's not sharp. Not, doesn't look like it's too high on one side either, that looks okay. We'll, we'll see, won't we? Any of these stuck in here? Crappy strings and these replacing. That might be cut okay, hard to tell at the minute. Yeah, the thing that I immediately looked at, does it really matter? I don't know. The neck pocket is really untidy. Doesn't matter, I don't know. Kind of gaps around it. The finish isn't particularly nice there. Yeah. Back of the guitar. This is a weird finish. It's a it's got almost like a greenish sort of hue to it, which is a bit like the ML3 Pro Modern I had recently. The neck is made well, it's absolutely pallid. I mean, that is pale, as pale can be. That is not the prettiest maple fretboard, but it's maple's maple. Uh, I was worried it might be too chunky, but I don't think I needed to. That feels, I mean, it's a 10 inch radius. That doesn't feel, it's a bit fatter than my classic vibe. Similar, similar. So that's that's a good sign. Oh, by the way, I've sold my Chapman, the one that was signed by Rob. Yeah, and that was too fat for me. Right, uh, are you still there? Guys, it's been a long video, so I was, hello. Right, position one. Oh, it's print that you can't read. Have a look at the little diagram. I'll hold that up just for a moment. You can always pause it, boink. Yeah. Wilkinson tuners made in Vietnam. Are the tuners staggered? No. It's got those funny ease lock ones with two holes in it, which I didn't use the last time I just skipped that. Quite like the head shape though. That's not too bad, is it? Let's have a look at the proper head shape. It's not a bad copy. Is it sort of in keeping? Just a bit bulgy, I don't mind that. Are the Benton's? TEs, they're, they're tellies. They're also a nice copy. Sorry, Steve Cathy, if you're watching. I know the people who like Jets, they're good guitars, of course they are, but they're not like the stock shape on those. So, and it's, it's weighty, but not hideous. So first impressions are a bit weird looking. And uh, the neck's not too, but it's wide-ish here. Pretty wide. As it's set up, these strings, if I keep it, I'm gonna have to go. Set up a bit high. Pit guard there has risen a little bit. Overall, having just given what I've said about QC on vintage guitars, apart from the not so great neck pocket, that appears to be one of the better <laughs> vintages I've had. So anyway, I'm going to uh, Hornby, that's funny. Vintage John Hornby, as in the trains, <laughs> uh, train sets. Yeah, so let me know what you what you think just off the bat, as it were. And I'm going to tune it up as much as I do tune the guitar and give it a little go and I'll come back to you.